when does Cincinnati start talking so much? Every time Ooh. I turn around, they got a DB talking about this offense is collegiate. Uh, he can only run straight line. You lost the first game. You lost the second game. You lost the third game. At some point in time, just shut up and play football. You know, it's a it's an intense league, so I always just try to keep my keep myself, you know, as low and as even keeled as possible. Howdy and welcome on in who day. Cincinnati Bengals Nation, happy to have you. The Cincinnati Bengals pick up their first win of the 2024 season, and we're going to get right into it. One and three start to start the season. I want to get your emotions after this game, your your true thoughts. When, when the clock hit zero, well, really, when Evan hit that last field goal to put us up 10, I was kind of like, we won. It, was, it wasn't even a, a relief. It was more of like just a bittersweet win. Not in the sense of I, I wanted us to lose at all, but it really felt like A, the Panthers had momentum and B, that they were going to score because our defense was not doing a good enough job to stop the run A and then stop these one-on-one -on -one plays. We'll get into the defense a little bit later, but what a game from Joe Burrow. He did throw his first interception of the season to, uh, it was a broken play. They were doing Mayday and he was linked up with Jamar and they really rarely are ever on different pages but it seemed like on this particular play they were joe was hoping jamar just stayed on that post route but he cut it out towards the corner it was already a, a mayday type of play but he was headed to that left side where xavier woods kind of picked it off and then you know boom you know it happened and i thought that was going to be the run i thought that's all th what the panthers needed to really make a good run and and really make the game close and so uh that was unfortunate but he is still great had a quarterback rating of 100 through for 232 7.5 yards per attempt which is awesome and got in the end zone twice chase freaking brown guys let's go this is what i've been wanting man just let him loose and we said in that last video just more carries right i don't need him to start over zach moss but if that helps that's awesome i don't need him to even take the carries away from zach moss but if that helps okay that's that's it they both zach moss and chase brown each had 15 carries collecting total 131 yards on the ground beautiful by both of them and then chase brown had two touchdowns on the ground and then zach moss you kill me you kill me with these, he gets hit, almost falls. His arm is, I guess, indestructible because it hasn't broken yet. We don't want it to. We None of us want it to, but putting all that body weight on that arm to keep you up and get into the end zone, very good things by the offense. The way T. Higgins introduced us to the game, putting him in the inside and having him collect those, you know, five-yard first downs, those, you know, short passes, the way we used T in the beginning of the game, having him in the insides i really really like that i hope we keep doing that keep utilizing that and then more so you know andre yoshivas with that amazing uh i think it was like a seam no it was a corner it was a seam no he he stacks the linebacker or a corner whoever it was on him and then he just gets on top of him and gets that crazy amazing catch for 29 yards and he felt that he's going to be feeling that all week but there is a player that I want to discuss, and we saw what Jamar did on that 63-yard touchdown, you know, getting hit multiple times and staying up. you got to wrap up. You have got to wrap up on a player like Jamar Chase, and he was just able to really do his own thing. I think it was probably like a 15-yard reception, maybe 10, you know, something around there, and then he just made it his own show at that point, and you saw both T. Higgins and Chase Brown. It looked like, with T. Higgins, it looked like he was racing jamar it didn't look like he was trying to if you go back and look at it, it looks like he was trying to race jamar to the end zone and then chase was out there as well blocking for the gang and then there is a player i want to discuss and and you guys all let me know but it looks like eric all is about to be all in on this offense eric all jr uh, our our rookie tight end had some had a stint had a short stint at michigan and then transferred to iowa and you know me school and position that that's big with me that that's really big and so iowa tight end and he's been making huge impacts and of course he only leaves the game with four receptions 28 yards but man his blocking his input with his blocking it's just going to be paramount for us absolutely paramount for us because he's athletic and he's big so he could play that h-back or quote-unquote fullback role for us uh you know we kind of let drew sample kind of just be an inline blocker on the line of scrimmage kind of guy but then we are able to move an athletic tight end like eric all all over the backfield to get set up 
for these amazing run plays that we have. And then the last player I want to discuss offensively, and then we'll get into the defense. Marius Mims, right tackle, rookie, did his thing today. Uh, of course, Javion Clowney did have a little bit of an inside move on him uh, in, in, in the early end. I think it was the second quarter. And, you know, Joe got rid of the ball. It was pressure on Joe. But hell, no sacks, guys. And, and this is kind of where I want to stay right now. Joe Burrow did get nicked up once. At, at, at Cordell Volson stepped on his ankle. That was very frustrating. He was limping. It looked really bad. I'm happy he stayed up. They're going to be icing that tonight. But the zero sacks, guys. And I want to make this the legitimate point. This is the point of all points. No sacks given up. Joe Burrow had a clean game in the backfield. And so kudos to the offensive line and for that and this is probably one of the best starts our offensive line has had in years and i don't want to lose that beautiful message with with the losses because they've been playing pretty well so defense here i come i hope you boys are ready lou anarumo i don't know what's going on and i'll, I'll give him a quick little rundown real quick or not rundown quote unquote excuses he can have right so no bj hill no sheldon rankins those are legitimate. Those are two starting defensive tackles. So that's big in that notion. But it looks like, and you guys just let me know, it looks like every single offensive coordinator so far has not had a problem with Luana Rumo. That it just it just seems as if our guys are not put in good positions to be successful. Cam Taylor Britt, and this could be the first game of the season. I don't necessarily remember what he had said about New England, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't great. But guess what? He he chirped his mouth with this Kansas City Chiefs, right? And he said, you know, he said Xavier Worthy can only go straight. He embarrassed us in that game with Rasheed Rice. And he, he did have a cool interception, but he got burned. And then with the Washington Commanders, he wants to chirp his mouth more and say that they run a college offense, that Cliff Kingsbury, he is a college offensive type of offensive coordinator. Didn't look like that on Monday Night Football. You guys did not get a video because I was so frustrated. And then this game. It literally, and you all correct me if I'm wrong, it looked like the Panthers game plan was like, all right, so they have 29, man press, let's go. 29 is press, let's go. 29 is actually in okay position to stop a corner. So let's do a corner post route on him. Deontay Johnson did it on him and, and score another touchdown. So Cam, I don't know what it is. It looks like for a few plays, they took you out, put in Josh Newton. And it looks like for a few plays, they took you out, put in DJ Turner. I don't know what it is with Cam. I don't know what it is with him continuously being in these man press alone on an island situations. But clearly, clearly it needs to stop and or he needs to work on his technique just a little bit better because that would have killed us. And like I said, with Lou and Arumo, it just looks like you're figured out. So, and you hear these announcers the whole game, like, you know, Lou and Arumo, there he is, where they pan the camera to him and they say all these things. Like, he's a, he's a great defensive coordinator and he can come up with these amazing, elaborate, very creative blitzes. And it's like, no, Mike Hilton off the corner. That's what it's, that's all it's going to be. You know, maybe Jermaine Pratt's going to go through a B cap. Maybe it's not going to be anything crazy. So, me, I know that only Mike Hilton's coming down. I know whenever there's a safety on the line of scrimmage that more than likely he's coming down, he's blitzing. So if I know it and I can see it, there's clearly something wrong. Clearly something wrong with this defense. Another week where 100 yards on the ground happens. Chuba Hubbard, I don't know what you think about him. I don't know what you know about what, 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 what aspirations or where you rank him in the top running backs in the National Football League. But for him to have 18 carries, 104 yards, and get into the end zone and have one carry for 38 yards, and then averaging 5.8 yards per carry, see, clearly, you know, I don't think Logan Wilson sucks. I don't think Jermaine Pratt is terrible. I, I don't even think Cam Taylor Britt, right? I don't even think he's trash. I, I don't. I think these are good players on our defense. But of course, this goes back to schematics. This has to go back to scheming. This has to go back to putting the players in positions to help them win. And I don't know if Lou Anarumo is doing that as consistent as I would like. Shout out to Chris Jenkins Jr. Also within this young defense, Miles Murphy, you got to get healthy because we just lost. I'm pretty sure we lost Trey Hendrickson for a few weeks. It uh, looks like a neck injury. We have Baltimore next week. Two teams in the AFC North that aren't playing very well. So let's hope Let's hope for a win in week five. So we'll see about that. Let me know about your thoughts. I'll be in the comment section waiting for you guys. 
Let me know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe.